Hello people! Today we are talking about promises. This video is part of a series where we learn functional programming with JavaScript. In this video I will be making a lot of references to previous episodes, so you'll get a lot more out of this video if you have watched the previous episodes by clicking there, especially the first episode. I've repeated a lot that one of the big things about functional programming is to make your code more composable. In this series, you've also seen a lot of callbacks. Callbacks is a way of telling your code that when this thing is done, execute this piece of code. Promises serve that same purpose as callbacks do, but promises are a bit more powerful because they are, unlike callbacks, composable. We are going to get into the why and how and all kinds of fancy stuff about promises, but first I'm going to show you just a very basic promise. So we have a uh, function that we are importing. Uh, it's called load image promised. Uh, I will be going into how to implement that function, but for now we are just calling it. Load image promised is being called with the uh, path to a cat. This function call will return a promise. Promise has a method on it called then. And we are calling then here and we are passing it this callback function. When the image has finished loading, this callback will be called with the loaded image. The callback function itself is very simple. It creates an image element and it assigns the SRC property from the loaded image to the image element and appends it to the body. Let me break the uh, promise out into a variable just to further illustrate that it is an object being returned. So we can return, I'll break it out into when cat loaded. Oh, like that. And then we call the then, which will give us the uh, the same result. Oh, this should be let. You should always use let in ECMAScript 6. So when cat loaded is a promise, uh, and that is just what it sounds like. It's not the value itself, it's the promise of a value. In real life, promises are useful because a person can say, for instance, a bank can tell you that, yeah, we promise to lend you uh, this much money uh, and then you can go to people selling houses and say that yeah the bank has promised me to uh, lend me this much money and you can actually make a contract based on that even though the, the you don't actually have the money yet. A promise is something that you can pass around and you can write code around it even though you don't have the value just yet. Boom! Here is the same thing but implemented with the callback pattern instead of promises. Just like the uh, other function that we saw, this function takes a path to an image as its first argument, however as a second argument it takes a callback. The first argument to the callback function will be an error if there was one. If there wasn't one, the second argument to the uh, callback function will be the uh, success object, in this case the image, and the function body itself is exactly the same as the other promised function. And this is a fine pattern, uh, it's actually uh, even a bit shorter than the uh, the promise pattern, so uh, one might wonder why, why use promises at all. Actually as many things in life, when you start adding more cats, things become complex. Cats, cats, cats! We are loading three cats. I broke the code that adds the uh, image element to the DOM out into its own separate function called add image. The add image function is used here, here, and here. So here we are calling load image callback with the first cat. That cat is going to be passed to the uh, outer callback, uh, and that is then going to be passed into uh, add image here. Uh, when that is done, we're going to call load image callback uh, with a second cat that is going to be passed here into the next outermost callback, uh, which then goes into add image uh, here. Uh, yeah, and then we're done. We're going to call load image callback 
here with the path and then that goes into the inner callback uh, and that is going to be passed to add image. What we see here is what is often referred to as the uh, Node.js callback Christmas tree of doom. This is extremely convoluted code. I even had to reduce the font size to get this to fit. Sorry about that mobile viewers. And this is just three levels deep. Imagine if you had six or ten or something like that. It would be zonkers. Apart from this being incredibly ugly, this code is actually not executing in parallel. Because the second callback is not going to be called until the uh, first one has finished and so on. This is also dreadful from an error handling standpoint. Uh, we're not doing an error handling here, but if we did, we would have to uh, do something like this for every single callback. Coordinating stuff like this with just callbacks is messy. All right, so we are now looking inside the load image callback. As expected, it takes an arrow, it takes a callback, it creates an image. It will wait for the image to load, and when it does, it will call the callback using the standard node pattern of null because we don't have an error, and then the success object, the image. If there's an error, it does the equivalent thing uh, with uh, a message, could not load image at URI, creates a new error with that message, and passes it as the first argument to call by DA. Here, where we call it null, it's null error, and here, the first argument is the error. And once it has set up those two listeners, it will assign the SRC property of the image with a URL uh, and this will trigger the image loading. And now I would rewrite this to return a promise instead of using callbacks. It will actually essentially become the function that I showed you in the beginning of this episode. ECMAScript 6 includes promises natively. However, unless you're watching this from the future, not all browsers have implemented ECMAScript 6 fully yet. Luckily enough, Bubble provides a polyfill for the promises. To use that, I will go bubbleify polyfill. Depending on how you get Bubble into your project, this line is going to be a bit different. Uh, I use Bubbleify, uh, which is a uh, browserify plugin, and I will put a link to the full projects that you're seeing here in the show notes. But I won't go into specifics uh, because these things change around a lot and I don't want this video to go out of date so soon. Try to instead focus on the, uh, the, uh, the parts about the promises because those will stay true for years. We are going to return a promise here. The promise constructor takes a single function as its argument. This function, this, this callback, will in turn be called with two arguments, resolve and reject. Both of these are also functions. And JavaScript wants you to call these functions with uh, the values when you have them or the error if you get one. So let's just start moving things into the promise. Uh, that's fine moving this in and instead of calling the the callback here with the valid value we will call resolve and we will only call it with the success value let's move the on error here ah! my keyboard is being an asshole work all right <clears throat> image on error. Instead of calling the callback, we will now call reject with the error. Uh, and we will also move this image.src in here. Bam. Uh, remove some lines. And now this is no longer reference this callback, so we can just remove it. So we are now returning a new promise here. Uh, the promise will get this callback, which in turn will be called with these resolve and reject functions, which in turn we are expected to 
a call with uh, the, either the success value or the failure value. So here on load, when we load it, we call resolve with the success image. Uh, or if we get a failure, we will call reject with this new error here. Let's go back to app.js. Okay, this is a bit badly named now. Let's uh, let's rename it into just load image. And now this won't do anything anymore because uh, the syntax will now be that this returns an object which we are supposed to call then on. And it won't be an error, it just will just be the success value. So just let's do this. Do this. And remove those. Compilation error. Oh, it's because we don't start these. There. We have another compilation error. Oh, yeah, it's because I'm missing these. Still, nothing happens. Uh, let's check out the console. Okay, error is not defined. Yeah, because we have now removed the errors from the callbacks. So let's get rid of those for the moment I will show you how to do error handling in a bit of course this still looks horrible remember how I told you that promises help us out better than callbacks because they compose let me show you what that means let me break each of the load image calls out so I can do that I'll move this here and I'll move this here. Uh, and what I'm gonna do now is promise dot all. I'm gonna pass in the these in as an array. So this is now an array of promises being passed into promise all. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to go then, and this is now getting a function callback, which in turn is going to get all the images. Let me console log that out. You'll see that we're getting three images here, uh, and they will have a lot of nice to see there. See that these are the Cat images. Let's do image dot for each img and call add image with image dot src. Huh. Oh, images. What? How awesome is that? How awesome is that? Look at how awesome it is. Let me clean this up a bit for you. Move that. Oh, there's a space there. We can't have that. Oh, this irks me. Just let me rename this. Just rename load image. It. We can do that in one line. Increase the font size again, right? Look how big we can make it now that we have so short and elegant code. So now this load image uh, function that we are importing, importing here is the uh, one that returns a promise. So when we are calling these load images here, we are actually creating an array of promises here. And we are passing that into the all method on the promise object. And this is native to ECMAScript 6. Promise.all will in turn return a new promise, which we are calling then on. Uh, and we are passing in a callback to then, and that callback will be called with an array of the actual values that these promises return. And for each image, we are adding that image to the DOM. So it goes in here. But what about the errors? We removed the error handling before. How do we handle errors when it comes to promises? Well, you just go catch and catch wants 
another call there, which should handle the error. And we'll do some error handling here. Handle error here later. If an error occurs in any of these, it will bubble up to this error handler, which is so much nicer than having to handle the error in multiple places. In summary, promises are, just like callbacks, a way of dealing with asynchronous code, when we don't know when things are gonna happen or in what order. But promises are more powerful than callbacks because they compose. I showed you one example of that today, using promise.all, but there are way more where that came from once you get comfortable with promises. In this show, I am doing the talking, but you are the audience, and without you, it would just be me screaming into the void. So, I need to hear from you. I need to understand who you are. Because of creepy YouTube analytics, I know where you're located, how old you are, and what gender you are, but apart from that, I am flying blind. So please Comment down below and tell me. Give me an idea of what kind of programmer you are. Do you work as a programmer? Are you studying? Is JavaScript your first language? What was the last thing you learned and where? Not counting these videos. Stuff like that. Oh, and the next episode is gonna be a good one. I won't tell you what it's gonna be about, but you don't wanna miss it. Make sure that you subscribe. And also, if you already have, turn on notifications for my channel on your phone. I always post on Monday mornings, but it's still good with the reminder, right? Until next Monday, stay curious.